In this example, we're going to write this trigonometric expression as an algebraic expression. So if you'd like to try it first, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll work it together. All right, so specifically here I have the cosine of, and I have this angle, and I'm subtracting this angle. So it looks like I can use the difference identity for cosine that has this expansion. But before we get there, let's go ahead and draw a couple of reference triangles that we can use. So here's the first one, and here's the second one. Okay, so this is going to be angle A, and this is going to be angle B from our formula, which we'll call here A and B. So A is going to be the inverse tangent of this radical x plus 3. So remember that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So from angle A, we have the square root of x plus 3 over 1. And we know it's over 1 because it's not a fraction, so it's kind of understood that the denominator is 1. So we can go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem now to find the length of this hypotenuse. It'll be 1 squared, which is 1, plus the square root of x plus 3 squared. So 1 plus x plus 3 makes x plus 4. And so it'll be the square root of that will be this hypotenuse. So x plus 4 is the square root. Okay, so angle B. So we know angle B is going to be the inverse tangent of the square root of x over 2. So once again, uh, tangent is opposite. So the square root over adjacent, so 2. And we can find the length of this hypotenuse by a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 2 squared is 4. And the square of the square root of x is just x, so 4 plus x. And it'll be the square root of 4 plus x, or we could say x plus 4. So you'll notice something good is that both of these hypotenuses actually are the same length. They're just kind of, these triangles are oriented a little differently. So a and b aren't exactly the same. Okay, so now that we have our reference triangles, we can go ahead and use this difference identity for cosine, this expansion, to see what we have. So this is going to equal, so the cosine of A, so angle A is here, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it'll be 1 over the square root of x plus 4, and that's in parentheses, and we're going to multiply that by the cosine of b. So here's angle b, and the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 2 over the square root of x plus 4. And we're going to be adding here, based on our formula, so then we have the sine of a and the sine of b. Okay, so a, the sine is, well, opposite over hypotenuse, so it'll be the square root of x plus 3, over the square root of x plus 4. And we're multiplying that by the sine of b, so opposite over hypotenuse again, so the square root of x over the square root of x plus 4. So here now is going to be uh, our algebraic expression, so let's just clean this up a little bit. So I can see that both of these denominators will be the same, I have the square root times the square root, and the radicands are the same. So I'm just going to have x plus 4 for both of these denominators. So the numerator here is 2. The numerator here will be, well, we could write this a couple of ways. We could say the square root of x times the square root of x plus 3, and that's all over that common denominator of x plus 4. So that's one way we could write this. You could, of course, put these together under a single radical, but uh, nevertheless, here is the algebraic expression that will be equivalent to this trigonometric expression that we were given initially. We went ahead and used these two angles. We knew they were both inverse tangents or arc tangents, and so we built our reference triangles. We grabbed our values from those triangles, plugged them into our identity, and here is our algebraic expression.